Well, hi, and welcome to still yet another one of our Christmas Eve specials, number 16, if you're keeping score. Gives us a chance to look back at some of the places we've been, the people we've met, and yes, the food we've consumed. A lot of our stories have to do with kids. It doesn't take long to figure out why they call it Flip Fest. And when they're not flipping, they're spending money. There's lots to buy here. Pictures of the competition and T-shirts, lots of T-shirts, all designed to inspire these kids. My son greatly uh, appreciate Ripped and Ready. He believes that he's Ripped and Ready. Your son? <laughs> yes. Does he look like that? Not quite like that, but I think in his dreams he does. Yeah, yeah. Does. yeah, he does. There is equipment to buy, things like this. What is that? This is the original block. The original block? The original block. So like there are others? No. Can you demonstrate it? Sure. Now, it does work better with smaller people. Oh, she did it much better. Success isn't just about talent. Publicity and promotion play a big role, even here. She's going to do a handstand for you guys, so... Oh, she is? Yeah, she's really good at it. She wants to show you. What are you, her agent? No, I'm her cousin. Well, oh, that's even better. Cousins aren't quite as sleazy as agents, you know. Right. Yeah. And like everything else in this country, looks play an important role in success. So you got you got shiny stuff and sparkly stuff in your hair. Did you know that? Yes. Oh, oh you knew that? Yeah. What happened? You get sprinkled with fairy dust or what? No. What happened? Spray and has sparkles. Oh, it's supposed to look like that. Really? Does that make you a, a jump better? I don't know. <laughs> Does it make you do anything better? I make myself beautiful. Oh, well, well, it seems to be working. <laughs> you know, for generations, kids in the outlying counties have gotten a day off of school to go to the Tennessee Valley Fair. It is an East Tennessee tradition. A lot of these kids are actually here on business, showing off the crops they nurtured during this past growing season and being rewarded accordingly. But as soon as that business was over, it was a straight shot to the fun. The Tennessee Valley Fair Carnival Run. There are students here from a couple dozen rural counties, and it's always fun to talk with them and learn about their home county. So you're from McMinn County? Yes. Yeah, what's that famous for? Uh, I don't know. Oh, what's, what's Meg's County famous for? I'm not sure. What is Kingston famous for? I don't know. What's Polk County famous for? I don't know. Who was it named after? James K. Polk. And what, what was he famous for? I have no idea. And what is Campbell County famous for? No idea, honestly. Who is it named after? Honestly, getting here. The soup guy, wasn't it? Then a guy that invented soup? I don't know. But you can always depend on the kids from Granger County. There's not a doubt in their minds what they're famous for. The Miters. Miters? Yep. Hey, you know who? Saginaw Outlaws. You're from Saginaw? We're from Inglewood. But well, why don't you call yourself the Inglewood Outlaws? I don't know. I've just always heard that. We used to be Saginaw. Who, who used to be Saginaw? Inglewood. Inglewood used to be Saginaw? Yeah. And Saginaw used to be Inglewood? No. Inglewood didn't... You, you confused me already. Oh, and here's the big winner of the day. It's another business day here at this Riverdale Kool-Aid stand. The two proprietors have a full supply of Kool-Aid, three flavors, a cooler full of ice, and lots of cups. The only thing they really lack is customers. Business is kind of slow out here. Kind of quiet around here today, isn't it? Yeah, I was hoping we'd get some business. Yeah. You ever hear the term location, location, location? Nobody now. A Kool-Aid stand is a good training ground for the basics of business. You just can't get more basic. So what's your role in all of this? What's your job? Pour the Kool-Aid and hand it to them and take the money. That's it. Pretty simple. Yeah. They put mom in charge of the manufacturing division. It's too sweet. Oh, it's too sweet? Yeah, that's what some people say. But sweet is good. Yeah, what do they know? They don't know nothing. It should be noted that it's not greed that motivates these guys. Their motivation is in a higher level. How'd you get in the Kool-Aid business? Well, we um, thought about raising money for our church, and this is all we had. It was Kool-Aid, so. When a car does go by, what's your technique? How do you get their attention? Our good looks. Yeah. 
And here's their first test of the day. So what does that say about your good looks? He must have not looked. <laughs> yeah. When we come back, we'll find out what East Tennesseans think on a variety of topics, and we'll hear a little down-home music. We spend a lot of time in malls and other public places asking people questions. It's called, in the business, the man on the street interview. Yep, this being spring, we set our clocks ahead, but not yet. You know what happens Sunday, don't you? Daylight savings time. Wow, Shazam! <laughs> yeah, what does that mean? Shazam? No, no, daylight savings time. <laughs> Never it mind. Means, it means we leap forward. Is that a question? It's a form of a question. I always forget. I always forget. What do they call that? Is it daylight, daylight savings time? Is it saving or savings? I thought it was plural. I'm going to say saving. Daylight savings. Daylight savings. <laughs> savings, I believe. Daylight savings. I'm picturing my planner right now, and I think my planner is with an S. <laughs> oh, really? So that makes it official. It's official. That's what the whole world goes by, your plan. It's in my agenda, yeah. so it's, it's wrong. official. Okay, it's daylight saving? Exactly. You're oh. saving daylight. Okay. DSL has a long and proud history that goes back to the French and the English. But Americans aren't always sure what the point is. To give the farmers more daylight to farm their crops. That's what oh. I remember. Yeah. So do you farm a lot of crops, do you? <laughs> but it gives us a nice evening. Winter and summer solstices, something like that, it sounded good, right? Are you in favor of it or not? Mox mix. You get used to it. Do you like daylight saving time? Yes, I love daylight. Daylight's a good thing. And I like saving it for later. <laughs> so it's a win-win situation. Of course, of course. There's a bright side to everything. Get it? That was a daylight joke. <laughs> It's President's Day here on the UT campus, a day students no doubt spend reflecting on the 44 men who have guided this nation through good times and bad. Who's your favorite president? Favorite president. Favorite president. I don't know if I have a favorite president, to be honest. Can you get one real quick? Teddy Roosevelt. Oh, who? Teddy Roosevelt. And why is that? Because um, you told me to pick one real fast. This is the first <laughs> All one. All right, I never mind. Present. I don't know. I liked Lincoln, I guess. He was good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Kennedy. Is he Reagan? No Obama. Let's go with Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, you like Lincoln? Yeah, I like Lincoln. What did he do to, to earn that? Um, he abolished the slavery? I have to say Andrew Jackson. Roosevelt. Uh, Roosevelt. Which one? Yes. Teddy. I'm going to go with Kennedy. John F. Kennedy? Uh, not really? Why is that? He was a good looking man. <laughs> Who said, speak softly and carry a big stick? Uh, um, I got. Abraham Lincoln? Is that Abraham Lincoln? No. Uh, Who said, a government big enough to give you everything you want is a government big enough to take from you everything you have? I'm going to go with George Washington. Oh, Gerald Ford. Who said you can fool all of the people some of the time and some of the people all of the time, but you can't fool all of the people all of the time? Ooh, yeah. Abraham Lincoln. Wow! How'd you know that? That was a guess. <laughs> East Tennessee has such a rich musical heritage and we try to tap into it every chance we get. Sometimes we throw in a little geography lesson, no extra charge. It's a rainy day in Boogertown. There's your song title right there. Few of you have ever heard of Boogertown. Fewer yet have actually been there. But here it is, deep in the heart of Sevier County. Just last week we found out that there's a musical group called Boogertown Gap. Shoulder up my gun, whistle up my dog, shoulder up my gun. So we figured this is the place we could finally get some answers about Boogertown. Boogertown? Yeah, it's, it's an old community here in Sevier County, one of the oldest there is. And uh, its real its real name is Oldham's Creek, but during the Civil War, through various stories about spooks in the bushes, it got its name Boogertown. No. Seriously. Boogertown seems a little quiet today, so we asked the obvious. What's the main industry in Boogertown? Living. 
<laughs> That's except for the folks here. But Ruth and Keith keep spreading the word about the joys of life in Boogertown. My old hen's a good old hen. She lays eggs for the Boogertown men. Sometimes eight, sometimes ten. That's enough for the Boogertown men. Cluck old hen, cluck and sing. You ain't laid an egg since way last spring. Cluck old hen, cluck and squall. You ain't laid an egg since way last fall. It's a name that most people don't forget. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cry though they might. That's right. <laughs> The walls are lined with instruments, as one might expect in a music store, and there is a laid-back atmosphere. A first-time visitor feels at ease trying out a guitar. The place caters to a lot of different tastes, from lovers of Lawrence Welk to Jews harp junkies. Many of the instruments here are not widely known nor widely played. Oh, what's the oddest instrument you have here? Charisma. Charisma? Yes. That's a charisma. <laughs> Can you probably take that out? Of, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sorry. That's a charisma. This is a charisma. How long have you been playing it? I've been playing charisma about five minutes. I would. <laughs> <laughs> well, they agreed to play us a song, and after some tuning up that we thought was pointless. Hey, uh, give me G, G, G. That's what we yeah, 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 no, yeah. A G. They did. In addition to the instruments, they have a clothing department of sorts. Red Hickey from WDVX and Nita Dunn from WDVX, uh, the two most stylish women in the whole <laughs> darn town, uh, styling their own way. Uh, we call it our wall of stage duds, but uh, a lot of non-musicians take advantage too because there's some great stuff in there. I see a pair of shoes that I'd look great in. Yeah, oh, the high heel sparkly ones. Yes, definitely. No! <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> come on! <Jeez. laughs> When we come back, we'll grab a bite or two to eat and have a little gospel music for desserts. For some reason, people think we eat a lot in this job. Well, we will now do our part to perpetuate that myth. Order up. It's another round of biscuits here at Rankin's Restaurant. Now, there's no telling how many biscuits they make and sell here. Thousands and thousands. Actually, the biscuit is just a culinary starter kit. How do people eat biscuits? They put them in my mouth and they chew them. No, no, no. In what form? Oh. Okay. <laughs> you can do biscuits and gravy, yeah. of course. You can do chipped ham and gravy, where you put chipped ham on it and then pour gravy on top of that. You can do sausage biscuit, bacon biscuit, bologna biscuit. That's so we decided to take a survey of how people eat their biscuits. Well, what is that all over your biscuit? <laughs> That's honey, thank you. Honey, well, most people just kind of spread a little bit on oh, top of the biscuit. But I really like the honey with my biscuit. <laughs> or the biscuit with my honey, yeah, I guess. way you want to do that. <laughs> so you just get yours with what jelly, huh? My biscuit? Yeah. No, I already ate the gravy. <laughs> I had gravy and biscuits. And then I save a little piece of biscuit to eat jelly with it. You That's that? my dessert. You did? <laughs> what, is, what happened to that biscuit? I don't like the inside. <laughs> so, so my husband feeds uh, the crows all the time, so we call that the crow food. Why don't you like the inside of biscuits? That's the best part. Don't ask me. I just don't like it. <laughs> Every Tennessean has memories of Granny's homemade biscuits. Are you a good biscuit maker? No, I'm not a good biscuit maker, but Pillsbury is. No, oh, you don't do that poppin' fresh thing at home. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, yes. She's a good gravy she, maker. I good thought in Tennessee baby. that was illegal for anybody with gray hair. <laughs> Charles Corral used to say that Southerners feel sorry for people who eat toast for breakfast, but there are some Southerners who were raised on toast. My father sold bread, light bread, from the bakery. Yeah. We didn't need biscuits back then. Because he we stole he stole some bread and you didn't have to... Yeah, yeah I guess. <laughs> These are cheese curds, and in Wisconsin, they are almost considered sacred. You can eat them raw or fry them up, whatever you want. 
But we're not in Wisconsin, we're in Sweetwater at the Sweetwater Valley Farms, and it is here they make lots and lots of cheese curds. So who buys this stuff? A lot of these people that are from Wisconsin and Minnesota, yeah. Michigan, yeah. that are living in Loudoun County now. <laughs> They've got to have their oh, cheese curds. Which county do you live in? Uh, Loudoun, Loudoun County. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is cheese at its freshest, hot off the presses. It's squeaky. It's what? It's squeaky. It's squeaky? Uh, you hear it squeaking. <laughs> is, is that good? I thought that was my jaw. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> Down here in Sweetwater, they can get pretty creative. Batter them, yeah. date fry them, yep. and then roll them in powdered sugar. Uh, powdered sugar? Powdered sugar. Who does that? I do. And apparently deep fried cheese curds appeal to East Tennesseans. Real delicious. Tastes almost like a funnel cake. Oh, if the name of this treat sounds a bit familiar. Little Miss Muffet sat on her tuffet eating her curds in a way that she got at Sweetwater Valley Farm. I don't, that's not the way it went, I don't think. Well, it is now. We talked earlier about kids and we talked earlier about music. This next story combines the two. While its roots go back a lot further, Southern Gospel music got its official start 100 years ago this year. Since then, Southern Gospel has grown in popularity and spread far beyond the South. Well, it's popular all over the world. Now Southern Gospel's big business and the Smoky Mountain Convention Center is lined with booths where fans can meet and greet their favorites or buy a CD or a cassette or a tie. <laughs> this group out of Helen, Georgia. It's called the Weaver Believer Survival Revival. <laughs> it looks really cool painted on the side of the bus. I I'm sure it does. <laughs> the group is made up of mom, dad, and the eight, count them, eight kids. The original plan called for this to be a gospel duo. Actually, when Chris and I got married 23 and a half years ago, they told us we couldn't have any children. <laughs> and uh, so this is the biggest case of malpractice you've yeah, ever seen in your see life. That. <laughs> they spend 250 days on the road in the bus. They're homeschooled and they're anything but lonely. Traveling on a bus, keeping a tight schedule requires discipline. Well, they call me the rest stop Nazi. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> When we come back, we'll meet a couple of people who make life real interesting. There's no question about it. It is the people who make our segment what it is, whatever that is. And here are two of the people who did a real good job of that. We've seen a lot of Lady Liberties, but this one in Maryville has a twist. Most Lady Liberties don't shake pom-poms. The way she handles her pom-poms leads to the obvious question. Were you a cheerleader in school? I or? was, yeah. I was. You can tell you got the moves. <laughs> I was. Now, the whole purpose of these Lady Liberties, and they're all over the country, is to attract customers to their tax service. When they come in to get their taxes done, we ask them, uh, what brought you in today? And they're like, oh, you got a lady out there with pom-poms. <laughs> it's like, how can you miss that? What amazes most passers-by is the fact that this Lady Liberty is tireless. Folks who drive past here at whatever time of day say she's always out here giving it her all. You don't get tired? No. You do this all day long? All day long. Non-stop? Non-stop. Well, until now I stop. But... Well, I'm sorry. I'm, I, pardon me. <laughs> You may have seen it parked at the Walmart in Powell yesterday. It's not something that goes unnoticed. 
It is a 1958 Browning fiberglass tri-hull boat grafted onto a 1995 GMC half-ton cargo van. Which leads to two questions, who and why? Here's the answer to both. It all started uh, 33 years ago when I was 18 in the Navy and I looked around me and I saw over 300 guys for every gal and I figured if I was going to have a conversation with any of them I was going to have to have a good icebreaker. So now he's known as Captain Cosmos. The magic boat gets 12 miles a gallon and 100 miles a mile. And countless stares. What's the matter? Haven't you ever seen it? Well, of course you haven't. <laughs> yep, wherever it goes, the magic boat becomes a tourist attraction. It's even got its own website. And while the current purpose is to provide smiles, it's not seaworthy yet, Captain Cosmos has bigger plans. The day I get it all finished and it does go in the water, yeah? I'd like to let James Bond borrow it to save the world. But wait, there's more. And then I'm going to ask Jay Leno if he wants to buy it. <laughs> well, that is our show. As usual, thanks for joining us and from the entire staff, Merry Christmas.